sisters in Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his goodness and his mercy that is endured through all generations. Let's give our coming king the praise that is true of the world. I was glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord for their fullness and their joy in God's house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We invoke that presence in this place, Heavenly Father. Have thine own way, Heavenly Father. And be with the choir, the usher, the deacon, the deaconess, the trustees. Be with your man servant and be with your parishioners, Heavenly Father. Be with us and bless us. We'll be able kept to give your name all the all the praise and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. All those who are physically able, would you stand all over the sanctuary if you're physically able? Amen, amen, amen. Let's give this choir some love as they come to this first election.
give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's give the choir some love. We thank DJ Journey again for leading us on today. Amen, amen, amen. We now have another selection. That's all right. You can clap for our DJ. We are on the land up there. Before we get down for the brother. We appreciate it. Amen, amen. We have another selection about this mile this choir. Let's give us some love as we come.
Amen. Thank God for being bigger than our situation. Right. Yeah. God is bigger than your illness. Yeah. God yeah. is bigger oh. than our problems. Yeah. 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 God is bigger than all of what you're going through. Yes. 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 Sir, a big God. Let's give him a good word. Yeah. Look up the name of Sister Ella Pilgrim, yeah. Amen. a friend. Uh, we want to lift up the name of a Reverend Lily Hookum, Sister June Knox, who's on the door to give us some love. Amen. Sister Terry Taylor, who's on the door to give us some love. We just text this morning, and we want to be in prayer for her and her family. She has a family member that has some lung issues that's going on. This year, a cousin that passed away this morning. So we want to be in prayer for her and her family. We want to be in prayer for my family, my uh, brother's wife, uh, uh, Deaconess Keisha Hill. She lost her brother on last week, and I have to go up to D.C. at the church uh, to funeralize him on tomorrow. So we want to be in uh, uh, prayer uh, for the, I think it's the Jews family. Whatever situation that you find yourself in, we thank all those who press their way. Amen. You all know we're going to be in mass until the end of this month because of the variant that's going on. But when uh, October comes, we are left in mass. We just want to get past this flu season type thing. But I want to thank Sister Knox for pressing her way in Amen. today. Amen. She don't feel her best in here this Brother Charles here, we want to thank him for being here today. Whatever it is that you stand in need of, we ask that you would take it to the throne of grace. We'll be led in our prayer by our, our vice chair of our diaconate ministry, uh, Deacon Edward Pigram. Let's give him some love as he comes. Mm -hmm.
getting old is one thing. Yeah. But when you get old and know what's going on in your life, that's a number. Yeah. Yeah. Father, we thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you so much for how she ain't mad, she mad and mad, but she don't know where she is. Yeah. But dear Lord, when we can say we sit and fast, sit and sit, yeah. and know where we at, that's yeah. 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 yeah.
daily on the promises of God. Before we get to our announcements, I'd like all our visitors to please stand. All of our visitors to please stand.
to the students. Amen. Amen. Thank you. As you will read on your announcements, and I won't take a lot of time to go into all of the activities, but just please be mindful of each and every one of those that uh, we have coming up this week and the weeks to come, and govern yourselves accordingly to those uh, announcements that are there for you. I do ask that you pray for our pastor as he's traveling. We, we don't see him on the paper, but he is traveling. So Amen. keep him in your prayers as he does at the first day of the whole down the fourth as well. Uh, we ask that you be, uh, we, Sister Will Brother has already spent her birthday with us. And now Pastor First Day will have an anniversary coming up. So we ask many prayers for them as they travel along life's journey. Those are the announcements. I would like to also indicate or uh, share with you uh, a friend that is here this morning. Uh, Sister Anita, stand up a minute. Amen. This is a long distance truck driver who travels carrying chemicals. She says she's kind of like that bomb on the road. Please keep her in your prayers, dear Lord. We talk often during the weekdays, just making sure that she stays on this highway out there. But we thank God for her when she does get home, which is probably, she says, about six days a month to be with her family. But she took the time this morning to come to celebrate God's house. Deacon's flower, she called me uh, last week and said she going to try to make it. And she came by the shop the other day because she was getting some donuts. And asked me, did I need some? I said, no, I don't want no donuts. I'm trying to do some make myself. But anyway, we thank you all uh, for visiting the weather today. Uh, very quickly, on this coming Wednesday, we have our church quarterly conference meeting. I need for everyone who's a member, if you're physically able, to please try to come to the meeting. Come to the church, church court and conference meeting so you'll know what we're doing in the community and what you know what we'll be doing in the church. And if you have any suggestions and ideas, please come. Uh, the uh, joint board between the deacons and the pastor and trustees will be at 6 o'clock. Uh, our church meeting will be at 7, so please come at 7. Amen. Um, also, uh, uh, on 60 years ago to this day, Birmingham, Alabama, there was a bombing. We took four little girls. And that started the voters, the voters' right during that time down in uh, Alabama to change legislation. My brother, he lives in Alabama now, and I've been to that church before, not for worship, but just to go visit it. And it's a, it's a solemn place to stand on the steps of the 16th Baptist Church, uh, just to witness what, what had happened. And of course, many of us have seen documentaries uh, because of that that happened 60 years ago. We don't celebrate it, but we commemorate it on today. Uh, the African American Museum is right across the street from the 16th uh, Baptist Church. And then also, they have a park, like a park that's commemorated uh, to those victims as well. So we want to uh, continue to keep our nation in prayer as we deal with racism and things that, and bigotry and things of that nature. Also, today, if you notice, most of us are in light blue today or some sort of blue today. Today is Prostate uh, Awareness Month on today. And uh, for every, they say for uh, one out of every four men would experience some type of prostate cancer. I just went ahead my physical on last week. Uh, my cholesterol was a little high. And my, uh, and my blood pressure was a little high. But she said she's going to check it back in another uh, 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 a month or so, but my, 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 my prostate is good, so thank God for that. <laughs> so I want to admonish every man to make sure you go get your prostate checked. Amen. Uh, do the whole rooter to the tutor. They, uh, you know, most people, they're just doing, uh, they're just doing the uh, 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 blood work, but if you got to uh, turn around, they let them do that too. <laughs> you know, it's just the way it is, you know. Uh, but uh, brothers, I, you know, because that's one of the number one causes of, uh, of death uh, with cancer when it comes to a uh, man, or more especially African American. Amen. Amen. And then on next, I won't be here next Sunday. 
Uh, but I have a good preacher that's coming. He's the pastor of the Tabernacle Baptist Church in Chesterfield. My good friend, Justin House, so please come out and bring a friend. Show him the hospitality that we normally show. And, uh, and he will bless your socks off. So please uh, be in attendance. Uh, Reverend Collins will be the worship leader. And uh, things will go on as normal uh, in our church. So, And then on the first Sunday, when we come back, uh, y'all know we always do colors and things of that nature. I want everybody who's able to wear their black suit and black dress. It's like the word of God. It will take you anywhere. That's what we're going to preach on, okay? On next, on the first Sunday. But that's communion Sunday. Black suit, black dress. It's like the word of God. It's going to take you anywhere. So I'm going to do some symbolism when it comes to that. Anyways, turn to your neighbor to your left and right and look them dead in your eyes. And say, you look good today. <laughs> Indeed, the Lord does me cheer for you. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, the ushers are coming. Deacons are receiving, and you, the congregation, is giving, and the choir is singing. You can't be God's giving, no matter how hard you try. Press down, sing it together, and run it over.
And that made you come home. Because you know everybody had to be at the table at a certain time. Uh, that uh, uh, mama didn't want you uh, heating her food up in the microwave. She didn't want you to uh, heat it up in the oven. She wanted you to be at the table when it came out of the pot when she finished making it. When she made everybody meals, it made you come home. You know, in our house, we try to eat together as much as we can, but uh, normally on Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter, we all sit together at the table. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, we had to have meaningful conversation uh, when we all sat at the table. Mm -hmm. You try to interact with your kids, and I know now it's harder now because they have cell phones, but we try to turn our cell phones down. But anyways, you try to have meaningful conversation with your kids, mm -hmm. with one another, and they always try to give you those one word answers. You ask them, how is school? They say, fine. Uh, uh, have you made any new friends? Yes. Uh, do you need anything? Money. That's all they say, one word answers. You no, know, we had to have and talk and have dialogue uh, with our parents back in the day. Even when we used to play uh, in the field, you know, we had a field beside our house. Uh, 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 Mary Allen, she lives across the street from where the, where, where the field used to be. Uh, those houses on Lincoln Street and Patterson Street, it was a field right there. We all played there. We played football, basketball. We played softball. We played baseball. We even had a whole court, dirt court, basketball court. We was bad in the field. But whenever our parents called us, we knew it was time to come home. Children now, they sit in the house and they play video games. And I'm not digging at the kids, but times have changed. Yeah. Back in my day, we, we, we used to play sandlot football. We used to go from neighborhood to neighborhood. Birds Bill would play Cool Springs, and Cool Springs would play Blanford, then Birds Bill would play Blanford, then we would play uh, uh, Fifth Ward. We would go all over the city. We would have our teams, and it wasn't recreation. We used to play just sand like didn't nobody have no equipment on. You just went out there, and then if we didn't have enough people to play, we would play whoever get the ball, get tackled. We would throw the ball up in the air, and we would catch it, and you just try to run to the, to the line. Somebody know what I'm talking about. But you knew after then it was time to come home. It's a new day now, but we all need to come in. We all need to come to God's house. And the three things we'll look up on today and we'll be out of here is first, come into God's house or come to church. Secondly, come into yourself. Third and lastly, come to Christ. Come to church, come to yourself, and come to Christ. It's time to come in. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Old yes. things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yes. The ark is a, a place of security. The ark is a place of salvation. It's a place of sanctuary. It looks strange to people because uh, uh, Noah was preaching to the people saying that a storm is going to come. Yes. That it's going to rain. A violent storm is going to come. And it's going to rain. But up until this point, it had not ever rained before on earth. See, God used to water the earth through his dew. He did not rain down on earth like he does now, but he sent his dew. You know how it is when you get out in the morning, you go to the mailbox in the morning, and you go walk across the grass early in the morning, and the water and this, the grass is wet. That's the way God used to always water uh, uh, his, his earth back then. He had never rained on the earth until this time. God would water the earth with his dew and not with rain. The ark was strange inside. It was 300 by 50 uh, by 300 by 30 cubits uh, in size. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, Noah was 120 years old. Uh, it took him 120 years to make the ark. Mm -hmm. It was made out of gopher wood. Mm -hmm. It was the strongest wood of its day during that time. It was strong, it was heavy, but it also floated. So the ark was uh, uh, 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. I know we don't normally talk like that. In other words, it was 440 uh, feet by 72 feet by 43 feet. It was three stories high. That's how big the ark was. It was a huge thing that looked strange. 
So you know the people look at the family of Noah strangely. Because here it is, he's building this thing by himself. He and his family, and he's building something that has never been built before. And some people will look at you strangely, uh, or look at us strangely, because we go to a church uh, that's kind of somewhat off the beaten path. We praise a God that we cannot see. People tend to look at us strange. We sing songs that are not popular on the secular radio. You know what I mean. Uh, we do things that are different than most people do in our lives. We don't talk like most people talk. We use words like I'm blessed and highly favored. We use words like have a blessed day. We use words like you are blessed in the field and blessed in the city. We use words like your blessing is on the way. And then we close it out with ain't you all right? Ain't you all right? I said ain't you all right? We use words like trust in the Lord. Those who are Christians, we are a peculiar people. We are strange to some people. We look and sound strange like Noah family uh, look and sound. We understand that our church is somewhat uh, a little distance away. We have many churches in the city, in, in the uh, county here. But when trouble comes, we know where to go. When trouble is on your trail, you know where to come to. We know to come to God's house. We know to come to the church. We know to come to the sanctuary. We know to come to Christ. That when a life tends to knock the life out of you, you know where to come to get your encouragement, to get your support, to get the love from the people, but more important, to get love from God. People will say there's churches on every corner. Why are there so many churches around? Well, you tell me, why are there so many ABC stores around? <laughs> why are there so many places you can buy a lottery around? There's a lot of churches because there's a lot of sinning going on in the world. And you need the churches to help combat the sinning that's going on in the world. Uh, we come to church. We come to the altar. We come to the people of God. But more importantly, we come to God himself. We come to Christ. We don't care about it being 20 minutes away from Petersburg, 30 minutes away from Chesterfield, 45 minutes away from Richmond. All we want to do is to get into God's house. Because when we come in God's house, there are blessings in God's house. There's the sanctuary in God's house. There's the security in God's house. We're satisfied in God's house. There is God's support in God's house. Being in God's house, there is the security. Mm -hmm. Now look at the ark again. It's three stories high. Mm -hmm. And it has only one door. Stay with me. <laughs> and this has only one window. There's a door. There's three stories high. And it has one window. The window you have to look up in the water to see out of it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to put it you. Uh, the ark is three stories high. Yeah. There's only one door to come in. And there's only one window that you have to look up in. Mm -hmm. No man comes to the Father except by Christ. Yes. That's the way you come into God's house. In order to have everlasting life, you have to profess the name of Jesus Christ. In order to come, the only door that you can come into Christ is through Christ. You have to profess his name, that he is Lord, that he died for your sins, and you then you can be accepted unto Christ. But also, the three stories represents uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The three stories uh, represent the Father who created us, the Son who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who comforts and seals us. That I need all three because I'm a sinner like that. I need all three in my life. We need all three in our life. We need the Holy Trinity. But also, when times are hard, we have to look up. Like, we, like they have to look up in their heart. Look up to the hills from whence come in your help. Knowing that all your helps come from the Lord. Can I get a witness? When you have been on your bed of affliction, you look up to Jesus. When your bills were due, you have to look up to Jesus. But when your children was acting crazy, you have to look up to Jesus. That when they go into the ark, the very presence of God was with them in the ark. The ark uh, rested for seven days. 
And the people was uh, looking at Noah and his family as if they were crazy. Mm -hmm. Or they had lost their mind. Yeah. But we, but when we are uh, walking and talking to God, we shouldn't care about what people say about us. Oh, yeah. uh, we shouldn't care about people what people say about us because they don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. Let them call you everything but the child of God. Because greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. First, come into the church. Yeah. Or come to church. The Lord told Noah to build the ark and to come in to the ark. Noah was a righteous man who feared God. He was respected by God. And so he chose Noah out of all the people in the land uh, to build this ark. That a flood would come, and it was hard for the people to hear this preaching that a flood would come, that it was going to rain, because they had never seen it before. They had never seen or experienced this type of storm in their life. And child of God, just keep on living, and there will be some storms in your life that you need to go to God with. That you will need to get to the ark of God. Let me say that again. There will be some storms in your life that we all need to get to the ark of God, to the sanctuary of God, to the church of God, to the house of God, to the altar of God. There's something about being in the ark of God. A loved one called home to glory. Come on into his ark. Lost your job. Come on into his ark. Children acting crazy. Come on into his ark. Relationship problems. Come on into his ark. A sickness your body. Come on into God's ark. There's some storms in life that you can't handle by yourself. Something about being in God's house that will bless your spirit. Bedside Baptists won't do it. I know during COVID-19 we all uh, went to Bedside Baptists because most of the churches was closed. YouTube just can't dig, do it. Facebook can't do it. Instagram can't do it. The CDs that you have that you've been playing over and over again just can't do it. It's something about being in God's house. Something about the people. Something about the pew. Something about the praises of God. Something about the preached word of God that helps uh, heal your spirit. You ask, uh, what's so special about being in God's house? What I tell you, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves. Yeah. That we need to be around one another because iron sharpens iron. Yeah. That the Lord wants us to be together to praise his holy name. Yeah. Because he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them, and I will bless them. And the very presence of God is in his ark. The very presence of God is in his holy temple. Yeah. Uh, the praises of God is in his church. The proclamation of God is in his church. Uh, so come on into the church. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth remain silent. He will bless you in his temple. He'll bless your mind. He'll bless your body. He'll bless your spirit. It's time to come on in. Psalms 133 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And there's blessings in God's house. There's healing in God's house. There's breakthrough through God's house. There's his very presence in God's house. Come into the church, but suddenly come to yourself. Noah had to come to himself in order to be of the ark. Uh, something of, uh, that uh, had never been built before, uh, something that looked strange to the people and to him, something that was foreign, something that the Lord only had told Noah to build. He didn't tell his children. He didn't tell Noah's wife. He only told Noah, and he gave him uh, uh, the diagram how to build it. They probably say she or he or she have lost their mind whenever you're doing something strange. You know how it is. But remember, uh, when God calls you to something, he'll see you through it. When God has asked you to do something, he'll see you through it. Because greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. I can do all things through Christ that gives me this strength. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. A more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. These are the scriptures we lean on. There will be times when the Lord will tell you to do something that is strange. 
There's something that's out of your comfort zone. I can remember when I was called to preach. It was strange and foreign to me. Of course, I've seen my pastor preach, and I've seen other preachers all my life. But when the Lord knocked on my heart and told me to, to preach, it was strange to me, and it even was strange to some other people in my, in my family and with my friends. But the Lord didn't bring me to it if he won't want to see me through it. So we must have a come to Jesus moment in our lives. Come to Jesus morning in our lives. You must make up in your minds and follow Jesus in spite of the criticism, in spite of the jealousy, in spite of the haters, in spite of the backbiting. You must have a come to Jesus moment in your life. And when you're doing God's work and when you're doing God's will, he will bless you. Let me say that again. When you're doing the work of God, God will bless you. Won't he bless you? Won't he lift you up? Won't he bless your heart? Won't he bless your life? When you're doing the work of God, God will bless you. Come on in. It's time to come in. First, come to church. Suddenly, uh, come to yourself. But third and lastly, come to Jesus. It's time to come in. Noah built up an uh, ark because the Lord had told him to. The Lord described to him uh, the configurations of the ark. Remember, it was 440 feet uh, by 72 feet by 43 feet. Three stories high, one door, one window. Uh, two animals of each kind, uh, two creatures of each kind. God was in the ark when Noah was building the ark. The very presence of God was with Noah, was with, it, with, uh, with Noah in the ark. The ark was security, it was safety, it was salvation, it was his sanctuary. Right. Noah did what the Lord told him to do. But if he had not did what the Lord had told him to do, he would have died like everybody else. Because the Lord told him to do it and he did it, uh, he lived on. Yeah. Let me say, I don't know who this is for. When the Lord tells you to do something, yeah. you don't want to die a spiritual death. Yeah. You must yield to what God is telling you to do. Well, if he told you uh, to, to, to give the money, then give the money. If he told you to pray, then pray. If he told you to do something, you must do it. You don't want to die a spiritual death. Yeah. Uh, there was safety in the ark. And let me say this. For those of us who don't have a church, for those of us who haven't accepted Christ, you are out of the ark of safety. Yeah. You are out of the ark of safety. I have a good friend of mine. He preaches a lot of funerals. And I was like, every time you turn around, Wickelson is calling him. And Wickelson called me a couple of times to do a couple of funerals. But I said, every time I turn around, they call you. And I said, man, who is this person you preaching? I mean, you, you're doing that eulogy for. And he said, man, I don't know who they are. They don't have a church family. They don't have a pastor. It's a sad thing when you don't have a pastor. Amen. You don't have a church family. You don't have someone that you can go to. You don't have someone that you can celebrate your high moments or go to you in your valley experience. It's a sad thing. And I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you need a church. I don't know who I'm talking to now. You need a covering. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. You need an ark. And I will recommend this ark for you, but you need an ark to go to. You need, you need to not be out of the ark of safety. Yeah. That's where that came from. Yeah. Because there's security in his ark. Oh, yeah. There's safety in his ark. There's salvation in there's his sanctuary in his ark. Yeah. When we come to Jesus, there's peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. When we come to Jesus, there's hope for tomorrow. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the side of my I stand, all other ground in hills sinking sand. When we come up to Jesus, they are safe because we are safe in the arms of Jesus. Is anyone safe today? Does anybody, has anybody experienced his peace? Has anybody experienced his joy, his purity, and his love? The ark was made out of gopher wood. Gopher wood, the toughest wood of that day. Uh, nothing could penetrate it. It was heavy, but it also was light in nature. Could it could float? It could float uh, through uh, the storm. It could float 
through uh, the flood. It could float, but it was strong. Nothing could penetrate it. And that's the way the Lord is for us in our lives. Nothing will be able to penetrate you. You'll be able to float over some things in your life. Sickness in your body, float on. Y'all want to float on. Love wants to call home to glory, float on. Y'all want to have children. Children acting crazy, float on. Anxiety all over you, float on. Because God is a keeper. Because God was with Noah and his family, he saved them from the flood. But it wasn't the ark that really saved them. It was the very presence of God inside the ark that saved them. And let me tell you, the very presence of God is in this temple right here. Amen. It's in this ark. When, uh, and when Christ is with you, God will save you. Let me say that again. When Christ is with you, God will save you. He'll save you from your enemies. He'll save you from sickness. He'll save you from death. He'll save you even from yourself. We thank God for being a saving God. We thank God for his grace and his mercy. We thank God for the power of God. Won't he bless you? Won't he heal you? Won't he do it for you? I know he will. When Jesus was in the prayer, he did not live. We thank God for the ark, that wood. But I thank God for another wood. A wood on a hill called Calvary. That wood is better than this wood. We thank God for that wood uh, of the ark, but we thank God for the wood that was shaped like this cross right here. We thank God for nails in his hands, nails in his feet, and the crown of thorns on his head. He died, did he die? But earlier on that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Power over death, sin, and the grave. So we thank God for the wood. We thank God for the cross. We thank God for the nail. And we thank God for the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood that reaches to the highest mountain. The blood that flows. The Lord the Lord the strength from day to day to day. We thank God for the blood. So what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Lamb. So give Him up. Give Him the glory. Ain't it all right? Ain't it all right? Ain't it all right? Say it. Say it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let's give the Lord a hand. Clap and praise. This is a point in time. Search your heart. Search your minds. Come on into God's house. There's no better place that I can recommend to you than to come to his house. We beseech you. Therefore, brother, by the mercy of us. Come on into his house. Yeah. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Let's give the
Committee, uh, wait on the praise report. We want to thank our visitors yet again for visiting with us. So give us a round of applause. You cannot uh, make this your last time. We have a very powerful revival that will be coming up in the month of October. Every Wednesday, you will uh, have some of uh, God's uh, best preachers on this side of heaven okay. uh, to be preaching. We, we ask that you will come out, and because it says heaven here on earth, so part of heaven is here on earth, amen. If you all want to think that uh, your pastor said that wrong, but uh, anyway, uh, so we ask that you come out uh, every Wednesday in the month of October to celebrate with us. Uh, the first Wednesday of the month would be uh, the pastor of the Mount Olivet Baptist Church, uh, Dr. Wesley K. McLaughlin, he and his wife, they'll preach that church uh, Wednesday. Then we'll have my pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Robert Diggs, he'll be preaching the second Wednesday. Then we have my friend brother, uh, Bishop uh, Reeves, Jeffrey Reeves, uh, he and his choir, they'll be coming out the third uh, Wednesday. And then on the fourth Wednesday, we have the pastor of the St. John's Baptist Church, uh, Pastor Herbert Ricky Holly, he will be coming out. So we, we're looking for an exciting time that God will uh, bless us in such a way. We thank God uh, for what he's doing and what he will do. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
We'll get the right hand of fellowship as well on first Sunday. We thank all our visitors for please coming. Uh, what I want to do, I, I know we still kind of in the pandemic. Uh, how many of us have had shots so far? Everybody who had a shot, raise your hand. Everybody who had a shot. Okay. Uh, what I want to do, I want to take a quick picture because it is a uh, 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 prostate cancer awareness month like we normally do. Uh, would everybody come to the front after we get the benediction right quick? We're going to take one quick picture and because we want to get the word out for, 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 for men to get their prostate checked. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you when our eyes have seen and our hearts have felt. We thank you for this young man who, or this young, young lad who's come to give his life to you, Heavenly Father. We ask that you be with him, guide him, and love on him, Heavenly Father. We thank you for making that step uh, to come closer to you, to come into your heart, Heavenly Father. We thank you for his grandfather who stands by his side, Heavenly Father, uh, who has come, who's uh, bringing up a child in the way that he should go, Heavenly Father. Teaching the ways of your church, Heavenly Father. We thank you for their lives, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all our youth that have come out on today, all of our young adults, Heavenly Father. We ask that blessing upon our young man who matriculated at Virginia State University, yeah. Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and bless him in doing his season, Heavenly Father, bless his studies, Heavenly Father. Do the same for our youth, Heavenly Father. Let them be a living example of your glory, of your grace, and your mercy. We ask for safety and travel on our buses, Heavenly Father. That they would not bring any type of uh, guns or weapons or any uh, things of that nature on the bus, Heavenly Father. That they would go there to get a mind to learn uh, their studies, but also to learn from you, Heavenly Father. Be with us all, from the youngest to the oldest, Heavenly Father. Be with those who are dealing with affliction, Heavenly Father. Whether mentally, physically, emotionally. Be with each and every family that's represented here and bless us immensely. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this word. Now to him who's able to keep us from falling, present us faultless for, for the presence of his glory with his seemingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. That is all saying.